everyone. Welcome back to the React Crash Course. Today we will be comparing functional components and class components and discussing when it's best to use the two. If you haven't already, make sure you watch my previous React tutorial covering how to set up a React starter project and how to build your first component. I'll be sure to put the link in the description below so you guys can check that out. This portion of the course doesn't require you to code along with me, so you don't need to clone a repository to follow along. Just sit back and let me transfer my knowledge to you guys. Today, I will be giving you guys an example of both a functional component and a class component. Here is an example of a functional component. It is this side navigation component on my personal site. I'm going to show you guys that. As you can see, we're on my personal site right now. I'm on my localhost 3001 and I have my server running and I'm just simply going to click this side navigation icon. And as you can see, my navigation menu opens and I have some menu options here. Once I click this again, it'll close the menu. That is this component that you see here. And a functional component is literally a regular JavaScript function that can take in some props as its argument. Some components do take in props, some don't, and it simply renders an element. Boom, that's it. We're gonna go more in depth in a future video on props, but for now, just know that props are pieces of data that your component may need, whether it's for display purposes, like displaying some data on your website, or it could be data used within the logic of the component itself. Props are just data that the component needs. Now let's take a look at a class. This is that same side navigation component, but is the class version. As you can see, a class component is syntactically different from a functional component. Since we're using a class, we have this class keyword, we say class side navigation. And as you can see, the class needs to extend from the component class from React's library. As you can see, we have the keywords extends react.component. That's pulling the component class from the React library. And we're extending off of that when we make a React component in a class. React classes also come with a constructor and a constructor is used to set up some initial state. I'll talk about that a little later. And then a class also comes with what is called a render function. And in order to render some elements to your browser in the React class, you need to have it within a render function. And as you can see, a render function works pretty simple. It is simple a regular JavaScript function called render and it returns some JSX. And as you can see, if we go back to our functional component, a JavaScript function doesn't require you to have a render function as the functional component itself is the render function and the return value is what will be rendered. So in a functional component, you can return the JSX, which is what we're doing here. And in a class, you would return the JSX inside of a render function for it to work the same. Now let's dig a little deeper. In classes, you're allowed to manage the state of your component. In React classes, you have access to a function called set state, which allows you to hold the data throughout the lifecycle of your component and manage the state of it. For example, a navigation bar that open and closes, like this. This component has two different states. It has an open state and a closed state. Not going to go too deep on how this component works, but I do want to explain um, the fact that classes give you access to state management. React basically makes state management super easy in your components. And like I mentioned earlier, React classes also come with what is called a constructor. And this method is used for setting up your initial state of your component and other things. So as you can see here, we set up the initial state of the menu open field, which controls whether or not that navigation menu is opened. This function is called before anything else versus functions, they don't come with a constructor. Classes not only give you the ability to manage the state of your component, but they also give you access to what are called lifecycle functions. Lifecycle functions are functions that are invoked during the lifecycle of a component. Component. For example, let's say we wanted to make a decision every time the component receives new props, meaning new data. We would call a lifecycle function called component did update. And every time the component updates, literally this function and whatever code I pass into it will be called. Now let's move over to functional components again. So in the past, functional components did not allow you to manage the state of your components. And in fact, were only used for components that were stateless. So something that required a lot of management of data wasn't necessarily something you would want to use a functional component for. Functional components also do not give you access to lifecycle functions like component did update, the example I showed you earlier. Now things are a bit different. React now provides us with what are called React hooks, which are useful functions that give you the features a class component would have. For example, there's a React hook called Use state, which allows you to manage the state in a functional component. An example of use state being on line eight right here, as you can see, I'm managing the menu state of my component using this React hook called use state. So you can set the default value here in this use state function instead of having a constructor, since functions don't functional components don't come with a constructor. Um, instead, you would in a class would set the default values of your state here, but you can do that inside of this use state hook. So we can now manage the state of our component in a functional component with way less lines of code using the use state hook. React hooks also give us the ability to hook into a component's lifecycle. 
So there's a React hook called useEffect, which is a function that is called every time the component re-renders. Components re-render every time their state changes or when they receive new data. So when either of these happen, useEffect will be called. And what's cool is we can manipulate the useEffect function to mimic a lifecycle function like component did update. Or in other words, we can make changes to useEffect so that it's called at a specific point in time in the component's lifecycle. Again, I will be going over hooks and state, props, maybe a little bit of life cycles all in the future, um, but I did just want to explain the main differences between a class and a functional component more in depth before we move on in this course. So, you may be wondering when you should use a functional component versus a class. I personally try to use functional components project-wide, so I try to stay consistent with my coding style and stick with one. Because we have React hooks now, it's really easy to access a component's lifecycle or state. However, there may be scenarios where it's easier to use a class because it provides you with more of the lifecycle features outside of the box. While with a functional component, you sort of have to mess with the use effect hook to reproduce the lifecycle function you're trying to hook into. But however, Facebook actually recommends that you use functional components as much as possible as they are the more simple and easier way um, to make components and test with as well. However, either, either way, they both work pretty great. I just say functions are more easier to test and they're more simple. Um, also, passing props into them are more simple as well. So, now let's go over what we learned. We learned that functional components are just functions that return JSX. Classes come with a render function, which will return the JSX. Functional components don't have lifecycle functions while classes do. Functional components don't have state management while classes do. And then lastly, functional components can use React hooks to manage the state and access the lifecycle. Um, but that's all I have for today. Those are the main differences between functional components and classes. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comment section below and I will get back to you. And in the next video, we will be going over props. So stay tuned for that. I will see you guys next week.